And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today I'm talking about the Seafarers of Catan. Now, if you've never played the Settlers of Catan, then go check out my review for that game because this is an expansion for the Settlers of Catan. Let's take a look and see some of the things that it adds to the game. First of all, the game adds a ton of new hexes and borders so that you can make large scenarios like the one that I'm showing you right now. There's even some more hexes included with the game and a few more border pieces, but this is scenario A that's included in the book. And as you can see, this is basically the size of the regular Settlers of Catan, but I've ad also added some other islands to this board. So that's one of the biggest changes, is that you can make much larger boards with multiple islands and more sea spaces. The biggest addition to this game, and what gives it its name, is ships. As you can see on the board here, it mentions that ships cost one wool and one wood, and right there, that's a big difference to the game in the fact that wool, which was a resource not needed as much as the other resources in the original Settlers of Catan, now has a use for building ships. And since ships are a major part of this expansion, you're going to find that wool becomes a lot more valuable. And plenty of ships are included with the game for each of the players. Now, ships are built on the board like roads, except they're built but on sea spaces. So for example, the blue ship can be built right there where I build it. Between those two spot two hexes as a sea space. In fact, it can count towards the longest road from the original game, connecting to a player's road system. The only uh, thing that a player would have to do is build a settlement between the roads and the ships. Now ships can be moved, which is different than roads. Sometimes you'll find that a ship is in a place you don't uh, really want it to be at, and you can move a ship to another spot. But also ships are important because, for example, in this scenario, it's the only way to get on these other islands. And many times when you get to another island, you get extra victory points. And so ships are a way to get off the main island, and in some scenarios, to get off the small island that you start with. So although ships don't seem like a major addition to the game, they really are, and they really break the game out of its original mold. The game also comes with a pile of victory point chips. Now, I suppose you could use these to count how many victory points you have, but they're also useful for just different scenarios. For example, in this scenario, where you're trying to build a settlement on this other island, as soon as a player does build a settlement or a city over here, they put a victory point chip underneath it to show that it's worth an extra victory point for settling that island, which is a pretty big deal. And really, again, give some more direction to the game, allowing you to go for different victory point options. This hex looks new, and that's because it's a gold hex. It's a new kind of terrain. Really, it's just a wild card. If you build a settlement on a hex, on this hex here, then when that nine is rolled, you get to take a resource of your choice. Well, this sounds fantastic. It sounds like something that you're really going to want, but the fact of the matter is, the scenarios are usually set up so that as in this example, having a nine gold resource is a great thing, but if you put a settlement there, that's the only thing you have on that island. Still, something tempting, and certainly something that you'll see different players going to try and get. Another major part of the game is the rule book itself. Of course, the rules are great and everything, and they certainly explain it, but what's interesting here is the scenarios. This is the one that I built, where you start with the main uh, Settlers of Catan board and then have a few extra islands. But here's one with four different islands. Here's one where you don't know what you're going to find as you go out with your ships. Here's one with a lot of desert on it. And as you can see, each of these scenarios offers a lot of variety from the original game. And this one even, this the Wonders of Catan allows you to build extra great structures like the Great Wall for more victory points. And so this really, to me, just adds so much to the game. Even with a few simple rules, it can really change everything. At first it might seem like this doesn't add a whole lot to the game, but in reality, just adding these little ship pieces can really change the game in itself. You can see that the board is bigger, so it will make the game longer. I find that Seafarers of Catan scenarios usually last between an hour and 15 minutes to sometimes even as long as two hours, depending what the 
the scenario is, but they're still very simple, very easy to play because all you're adding is a ship. The only confusion with players is exactly how ships are moved, and but other than that, there's not a whole lot really that, that changes. One addition, which I didn't show you on the board, is the pirate ship. This ship comes out and it moves around the seafaring hexes and ver acts very similar to a robber. Uh, the difference being that it doesn't stop you from producing, but when you move the ship, whenever you roll seven, you don't have to move the robber. So if the robber's on a space you want, normally you have to move it, but you can move the ship instead. And also, players can't build their ships next to the robber ship. So, I mean, the, the interaction is still here. The ability to build bigger, neat boards and to give you a sense of exploration, that's certainly in the game, too. And so, if you like Settlers of Catan at all, then this, to me, is a must-buy expansion. This just adds to the next level, and I almost always play with it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.